All right, we're back. We are on page one of notes 23 from Calc AB, which is all about slope fields, which might be a new concept to you. Um, it might be something that you've kind of stumbled across before. Let's take a look at the idea and see if we can create one. We're gonna make the worst one uh, that you will ever probably make by hand. So our differential equation that we're dealing with is dy dx equals negative x over y. Okay, differential equation just means it's an equation that has a derivative in it. This one's kind of implicit because there's an x and a y, a lot going on. So what we want to do is we want to try to figure out uh, for each point in the slope field. So like you look at it, there's a point one, one, right? So one, one kind of looking, uh, I don't want to mess this up too much. So I'm looking here, right? And then at one, one, what I do is I take the ordered pair one comma one, and I'm going to sub it in here and that'll give me negative one. And so I go back to the point one, one, and I draw a little tiny, it's as if you're drawing a little tangent line, a little tiny tangent segment that is centered at one, one, and has a slope of negative one. And then you repeat that process for every point that you see. So let's get going on that. So sometimes there are like better and worse choices that you can make. So for example, if x is equal to zero, right, dy dx is negative x over y. If x is equal to zero, then the slope is always zero, except when y is equal to zero, when we get zero over zero, there's nothing going on there. This, this function doesn't exist when y equals zero. So uh, the slopes are always zero, so I'm going to fill those in like this. Like, you'd think I could, like, copy and paste or something, but I don't think that'll really work very well on this. All right, what's the next best thing? Well, when x is equal to one, no, let's do when y, when y is equal to one. If y is equal to one and dy dx is negative x over y, then the slope is just negative x. So if y is equal to one, the slope is the negative of x. So at this, at the point negative one, one, the slope will be positive one. At um, negative two, one, the slope will be uh, positive two. So what I'm doing here, uh, I'll show you and then I'll erase it again. What I'm doing is I'm aiming, so I'm starting at this point and I'm aiming here, and then I'm drawing my little segment. So why am I aiming there? Because it's over one and up two. That's kind of how you do this. So I do that and I aim there, but then I don't want to draw those all over the place because that would be really annoying. So I'm just going to keep kind of thinking my way through it. So the slope here would be three, then four. Four like might as well be infinity basically. Um, you have to go really high. It's not even like on there. So you're kind of aiming there and you just kind of go for it. So we get that. Now look at this kind of like symmetry that's developing here. Uh, look just along the line y equals one. And it looks like uh, the slope at one and negative one are like symmetric to each other. I think we can probably make use of that, hopefully. Um, and basically I just hate filling these in by hand. Um, and I think that you probably will too. So, uh, in, in an actual problem, you never really do more than like nine points. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to look along the line y equals x. Okay. So if, where do I have some space? Almost nowhere. You know, I'm just going to use uh, this problem here where it says, assuming that y does not equal zero, blah, blah, blah. Along y equals x, which is not an option. So I'm going to add it down here. Uh, if y equals x, then dy dx is gonna to simplify to negative x over x, which is just negative one. So the slopes are always negative one along y equals x. So let's, let's use that, get some, get some easy points here. Okay, um, how about y equals negative x? So if y equals negative x and dy dx is um, negative x over y, then the slope is always positive one. So dy dx will equal positive one. So that's along y equals x. So let's uh, y equals negative x, sorry. Do this, this. So this is, I mean, this is definitely faster. Um, y equals negative 2x. So if y is equal to negative 2x, then it's, uh, so dy dx, you're literally just subbing in. So dy dx is going to become uh, negative x over negative 2x, so positive 1 half. So y equals negative 2x you get a positive one half, which is up one over two. So up one over two. Oh, but then I'm not on the line. Make sure you're on, make sure you're actually on the line, right? So when X is two, Y is negative four, the slope will be one half. So 
struggle. It's kind of, it's hard to do. Maybe I should use different color for different lines. I mean, that would be the killer thing to do. Do I want to go back and do that? I don't want to, but uh, now that I've thought of it, I feel like I should do that. So uh, we got one half and one half. So this is fewer points, but it's still valid. One half and then one half. Okay, and then, uh, I mean, I feel like it makes sense to use y equals 2x, which didn't make the cut, but if y equals 2x, then dy dx will become positive, uh, negative one half, right? So if y equals 2x, you get positive, what do you get? Negative one half, geez, it's so hard to keep track of. Uh, here, and then here, and then uh, they're already filled in for us in the first quadrant, that's nice. Um, y equals, what do, what do I need? Y equals, so if y equals 3x, there's only one point, so I might as well just plug that point in. Uh, so negative one, negative three, x is negative one, y is negative three, so I get negative one third. So negative one third, super hard to do, like that basically, which means at one three, we're gonna get positive one third, which is like equally hard to do. And then up at uh, negative one, positive three, I get a positive one third slope. So fill that in. Um, all right, what else? What's like, what's the most bang for our buck here? If y is equal to negative one, so if y equals negative one, what slopes do I get? I get, uh, if y is equal to negative one, then dy dx, just writing all over the place here. If y is equal to negative one, because I do not give enough space on this, dy dx is going to be uh, just x. Okay, so if x is two, then my slope is that. If it's three, my slope is this. If it's four, it's like very steep. Uh, negative two, negative three, negative four, very steep. Okay, uh, what points are we missing here? Do we get the idea? Like, do we really need to keep going? I just don't want to. Um, so if, I mean, I'm gonna keep going, but I'm gonna keep complaining. So if x is negative one and y is four, then I get positive one fourth, which is like impossible to draw anyway. Uh, positive one fourth here. Um, what are we doing? So down here, I'm gonna get negative one fourth by symmetry. Here, I'm gonna get positive one fourth by symmetry. Uh, if x is equal to three and y is equal to negative four, I get positive three fourths. I don't even know how to do that. Um, that's gonna be like, I don't know, like uh, whatever, something like that. And then here by symmetry, like something like that. And uh, you know, you can keep going. So I'm just gonna stop there. Uh, so the problem with, let's answer some of these questions. So the problem with y equals zero is that dy dx doesn't exist there. So it does not exist when y equals zero. So um, there's nothing we can do. We're not gonna put anything there. So some people will put vertical line segments, which is in my opinion, totally fine. Um, some people won't. It just depends on like how you're dealing with it. So we can also answer these. So keep in mind for all of these, we're dealing with the specific differential equation. dy dx is negative x over y. So since it's negative x over y, if y is equal to, uh, so we already did this one, I guess, uh, we already did b. So b, um, I think we got, if this is true, then uh, this was true. You just do these by substitution with the provision that y is not equal to zero, because y cannot equal zero for this particular thing. So if y is equal to negative 3x, then dy dx is going to be negative x over negative 3x, so just one third. Uh, this will be uh, dy dx is one fourth. So this is pretty brutal. Um, and it's always, when we do it in class, it's brutal too. I mean, there's no good part about this. Uh, here we'll get dy dx is equal to negative x over negative x over two is just two. So then you can kind of see dy dx here will be four. And then uh, if, let me move this out of my way. If uh, y is equal to negative x over three, um, I'm gonna get positive three. So that would be dy dx equals three. 
And I think we answered all of these. We're kind of all over the place on this. That's okay. Um, so the idea here that I always think of is uh, what we're looking at is all the possible solutions, not just one little solution, all possible solutions to the differential equation. If you look at it, what does it look like the solutions might very well be? I think the solutions might be circles because it kind of looks like a bunch of circles. Um, and so I should probably fill in the ones that are missing. I just like really don't want to. Uh, let's see, there, it's probably like steeper. I'll do like a fake job. You can't tell anyway, right? Like proved, oh, okay, well, unless that happens. Um, like prove to me these aren't accurate, you know? Like bust out your, whatever, your measuring rod or something. Like less steep, a little less steep. Like very less, but uh, and we're it's like I couldn't not finish, even though I wanted to not finish, because uh, it's just it's so annoying when there are blanks. Okay, so it looks something like that. You'll never know that I didn't do those perfectly in like five seconds. All right, so when we're creating our own slope fields, what we do is we pick a point that's in the field. You take that point, you plug it into the differential equation. That gives you the slope of the curve or the slope of the tangent line to the curve at that point, you draw a little tangent segment. That's all you're doing. Um, so they're not that bad. As I said, I think that the solutions look like circles. So they look like circles, but I'm wrong. So the reason that I'm wrong is the definition of a solution to a differential equation. So our definition of a solution to a differential equation is as follows. Um, the solution must be a function. It must be continuous on a domain that contains the initial condition. So it must be a function. Circles are not functions. So actually, they're actually going to be semicircles. And that's crazy. So the actual solutions that we're seeing in this particular slope field aren't circles, even though they look like circles. Circles aren't functions. They can't be the solutions to this differential equation. But what can be is semi-circles, and that's what we're getting. So now we're asked to sketch um, possible solution curves that pass through certain points. So through the point 2, 2, let's go do that. So 2, 2, um, I'm going to use like a really thick line, I think. I, uh, I'm going to try. So 2, 2 is right here. Holy cow, that's really thick. Uh, I'm going to not do that. Now I can't remember what thickness I usually use. Looks like that. Uh, all right, I'm going to not do that. 2, 2. All right, so a circle that, what would the radius of this circle be? It'd be 2 root 2, 1.4 times 2 is 2.8. So I'm going to aim for like here. It's going to be an open circle. Uh, I'm going to aim for here. It's going to be a closed circle. I know that I'm going to go through negative two, two, and then open circle here, and now I'm gonna do my best. So when you hit an actual line, a little tangent line, it should have, you should have the same slope. This is like a skill that I do not necessarily possess, uh, but that right there is a possible solution curve that goes through two, two. Uh, let's change up the color and try again. So now we're gonna try for uh, zero, three. So maybe I'll do this, two, two, was this color. Uh, zero, three, I'm gonna use this color. Okay, x is zero, y is three. So this is gonna be really close here. Uh, so the radius is three, so the next good point I'm gonna really go through, but that's an open circle because y cannot be zero. Here's an open circle. I'm just gonna try to keep it parallel as I move through the field like this. And then, ah, I can't do it. You can feel my wrist bending in a weird way. Uh, so there's my possible solution there. Uh, so now I need to go through negative three, negative three. All right, so negative three, negative three is gonna be three times root two. 1.4-ish times three is uh, 4.2. So negative three, negative three is here. And uh, okay, so we're going to go up here, sort of, negative, so positive three, positive three will be on this. And maybe uh, open circle, open circle. And you just kind of do your best. 
right? So the way that I think of these, it's sort of a Zen sort of thing. Uh, this is like water that's just kind of circulating or a river that flows in a circle for some reason. And you drop in a twig and you just see where it goes. Or you're dropping a leaf and you see where it goes, right? So it just kind of like follows the current. Um, that's how I always think of these. It's like the most peaceful thing that I think of in, in all of math. Usually my examples are a little, uh, a little violent, to be honest. Uh, negative one, negative three. This one stinks. Negative one, negative three. So we're down here, which means we'll also definitely go through here. Uh, so what would that be? That'd be the square root of 10 is the radius. Square root of 10 is like a little more than three. So I think I'm going to aim for like there and like there. And uh, I don't know, you just kind of go for it. So here-ish. So I guess I should actually go through the point um, negative three, one and three, one, because that's definitely the same distance. This, there we kind of go. Um, so that's it. You, you just try your best. So when you are, uh, let that catch up. When you are drawing your own solutions, you, you do the best you can. And you do that thing that I was saying. You like imagine that it's flowing water. You drop a leaf in there and you're like, where are you going to go? Right. And you can go like forward. You can go back. You cannot cross any asymptotes ever. No vertical, no horizontal. That's going to be a rule. We don't exactly know that yet. It has to do with our solution must be continuous, right? Continuous, you can't like pass through a vertical asymptote because like you're definitely not continuous. Um, you're not going to be able to pass through a horizontal asymptote for basically the same reason. We'll talk more about that. I'm going to end this here. It's like a very, uh, that's the worst uh, slope field you're ever going to make. And uh, it was pretty bad, but they're only going to get better from here. So that's good. So I'll see you in the next video when we'll like keep going and we'll, we'll see more that we can do with these things. So I will see you there.